Following the theatrical releases of Space Battleship Yamato and Mobile Suit Gundam, anime went into a great period of growth and boom that many historians have labeled the Golden Age of Anime, the decade when the anime community would be taken by a storm. This is the story of the Super Force of Space Explorers. Specially trained and sent by the Alliance to bring back... Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Hayao Miyazaki and Aiso Takahata founded the internationally recognized Studio Ghibli in 1985. The subculture otaku, a Japanese term describing a person obsessive with anime or manga, emerged in the late 70s that became ever more present during the 80s. Anime magazines Animage and New Type popped up in response to the overwhelming fandom of Space Battleship Yamato and Bombo Suit Gundam. Passionate University Otakus formed Gainax, the same studio that brought us Neon Genesis Evangelion and Gurren Lagann. They started off their career producing amateur shorts at anime conventions. Urusei Yatsura received an anime adaption in 1981, feeding onto the likings of the otaku culture of high school and including a protagonist surrounded by cute girls that established the show as the first harem anime. Full of spaceship battles and insightful views on politics, the ambitious anime show Legends of the Galactic Heroes was released on a fan-led video subscription. And finally, the creation of the home video market. Anime viewers could finally watch and rewatch anime right in their homes without worrying about leaving for the theaters or tuning into TV at the right time. The original animation or OVA was introduced by Mamoru Oshii's not-so-successful project Dalos. And with the release of the OVA also came hentai, aka anime pornography or cartoon porn or whatever you want to call it. Hentai games. And the emergence of a hentai would forever ignite many of the controversies and negative connotations associated with anime. While hentai was flourishing in video rental stores, a rape is serial killer incident relating to hentai unfortunately has stirred society to draw the connection of otaku to activities of molest and sexual assault. No longer would being called an otaku be considered an honor, it would simply become derogative over time in the decades to come as other anime related crimes would further gradually encourage society's disapproval of the otaku culture. As far as the release of anime titles go, 1983 saw the release of soccer anime Captain Tsubasa, the first worldwide successful sports anime that would influence the creation of anime in this genre. In 1983, Gogo 13 The Professional was the first anime to experiment with computer-generated images or CGI. The success of Dragon Ball in 1984 paved the way for the martial arts genre in anime. Also part of the same genre, the show that is full of manliness, exceeding testosterone, inducing levels of over 9,000, Fist of the North Star kicked off the same year. And of course, there's also the plethora of space operas, mecha, and robot anime that dominated the golden age of anime. Robotech and along with the Space Yamato Battleship dubs became hits in the United States, bringing in another wave of anime fans. The Mobile Suit Gundam sequel, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, achieved average ratings of 6.6% and peaking at 11.7% in Japan. Furthermore, anime films became more ambitious than ever, with every one of them trying to beat each other in production and spending. One of the most influential anime films, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, set the standards of anime filmmaking during the decade and as well as established the foundations of Studio Ghibli. Shortly afterwards, Studio Ghibli released their first film in 1986, Laputa Castle in the Sky. Gainax then set out to compete with Studio Ghibli's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind by producing one of the most expensive anime films at the time, Royal Space Force The Wings of Hanamai. It was critically acclaimed and performed well in the box office, but didn't even come close to breaking even, virtually leaving Studio Gainax bankrupt. Children's Story My Neighbor Totoro and anti-war film Grape of the Fireflies released the same year in 1988, both regarded highly by critics. Akira released that same year with cost productions rivaling that of Royal Space Force The Wings of Hanamai. Although the film failed in Japan, Akira has widely been considered a landmark anime, credited for bringing in another wave of anime fans in the West where it became an occult hit. It was the exceeding production costs of both Akira and Royal Space Force The Wing of Hanamai that would end the era of ambitious and expensive anime filmmaking. 
Studio Ghibli would emerge victorious on the end of the decade with Kiki's Delivery Service. The Golden Age of Anime would finally close its curtains with the death of Astro Boy creator Osamu Tezuka and for Hirohito only a few weeks earlier. It was truly an end of an era. Anime conventions were becoming bigger, running annually and attracting more fans. Popular and well-known conventions emerged in this decade, including Anime Expo and Akon. With the VHS also came the rise of fan subs from anime imports. Domestic licensors including Streamline Pictures, AD Vision, and Gianna Pictures appeared, distributing anime for the international audience. While anime once appealed to the niche diehard sci-fi geeks, which consisted of university students and the film enthusiasts that found their love for anime during the 70s and 80s, the anime adaption of video game Pokemon further broadened the audience in the West. Before Pokemon, anime was perceived as either teenager shows, or violent cartoons, or even cartoon porn. The immense popularity of Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z has cemented anime as merely a cartoon in the eyes of the general public. And to that point, it is true. The anime of mechas and shonen consisted, and even today, a niche fandom whose popularity and revenues can't compete with those of Pokemon and Studio Ghibli films. To put into perspective, the first two Pokemon movies opened with 8 figures, whereas the 1995 Ghost in the Shell film had a modest opening weekend of $2,737. But despite the conspicuous differences in sales, distributors like ADV Films held onto conservative ways. Focusing on the fan-friendly market, they appeal to this niche American fandom rather than the immense popular children's sector that Studio Ghibli managed to achieve, which has yielded way to their success internationally. In 1996, Disney bought rights to all of Ghibli's films. Furthermore, the popularity of the video game industry began luring many animators away from the harsh life of anime. Computers became ever more present as opposed to hand-drawn animation. Video games and anime collaborated on works, which has led to the formation of studios such as Production IG, the same guys who would bring us Attack on Titan, Guilty Crown, and the Ghost in the Shell franchise. Even though the golden age of anime seemed to have ended, the 90s for anime still released a number of both short and long-running titles. Shonen anime that came out included Rurouni Kenshin, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Hikaru no Go. Gundam spawned another Gundam with Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Sailor Moon inspired revolutionary girl Utena, making its way to the niche fandom. Shinichiro Watanabe teamed up with composer Yoko Kano to produce one of the greatest show during the decade, Cowboy Bebop. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. Held by many as a masterpiece and frequently considered the greatest anime of all times, Cowboy Bebop's not successful viewership in Japan gained a massive hit in the West, as the show was centered on Western-inspired themes and stories. The show follows the adventures of a group of bounty hunters, exploring and paying homage to a wide variety of Western media, including the Queen's George Clooney, Sleeping Beauty, and Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. But if there was any show that is most recognized from the 90s, it was undoubtedly Neon Genesis Evangelion. It was a highly popular but controversial show. In fact, the ending was so controversial that fans threatened the director and staff, resulting in the release of the End of Evangelion movie that tells an alternative ending to the series. At a time when anime was in a slump partially due to the troubling economy in Japan, Neon Genesis Evangelion revitalized and transformed anime, as well as popularizing the 13 to 26 episode standard for anime series. The show deconstructed the mecha genre and the character archetypes of spineless main male archetypes, sundaris, and dondaris, which have become prevalent in anime today. Look at the mainstream side of anime, Pokemon sat on top of the anime world with a gratuitous plethora of Nintendo kids excited for the next episode. Dragon Ball Z pumped up the boys, and Sailor Moon was idolized by the girls. Adult viewers of anime got Satoshi Kon's psychological thriller Perfect Blue and Itoshi Mamoru's Ghost in the Shell film, a film that would inspire the makers of The Matrix. Studio Ghibli released their ambitious film, Princess Mononoke, in 1997. The decade ended with two things that will shape the next century of anime, the DVDs, and biggest of all, the rise of the internet. 